Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of music, philosophy, and more. Uh, I'm your host, John Henry Sheridan, and uh, this is my guest, Tom T. Scuderi. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. So we are going to jump right into it. What do we have for them today, Tom? Uh, we got to talk about a little about your music. Music all around us. Uh, Rock Hall of Fame contenders for this year. Uh, we I put, showed you a clip from a, a nice combination of ACDC with Foo Fighters. Hmm. All right. So how about I'm a little close to the mic. How about we get started and you tell us who are the contenders? Good everybody. Sorry, let me go. Happy Tuesday. Contenders. For the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year, and what's the what's the topic? Um, Foo Fighters or the, the top rock band for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hopefully, they get in. I mean, they've been around for probably twenty five years. Twenty five years for your first album. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the Foo Fighters were after the Nirvana, and Dave Grohl was the hottest free agent available at the time. Pearl Jam wanted him. Tom Petty and Heartbreakers wanted him. Uh, as a drummer, but uh, Dave's like, he had some songs recorded and he did the whole first album by himself, and uh, the rest is history. Thankfully, he made the right choice. Mm -hmm. uh, can I move your chair just slightly so okay. I can... Okay. Okay, now you can kind okay. of face me. Too. All right. Okay, good. So, um, all right, so you're basically saying that uh, Foo Fighters are up for being in the Rock and Hall of Fame. Yes. And, and you think they shouldn't be. They should be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> They're the kings of the kingdom. They grow especially. You know how I feel about they grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, drummer, great drummer, legendary, one of the top five drummers of all time. Great singer, songwriter, guitarist, cool guy to have. Mm -hmm. I recently saw a, uh, a video. Was that you shared of, of him playing with uh, Brian Johnson? Yes, I did. Sh I shared it. I, the Global Citizen that happened the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at YouTube and was like, wait, wait a second. You told me Foo Fighters with Brian Johnson, Back in Black? Yeah. And awesome. With, and with real people there, right? Real people. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's an awesome uh, thing to have. Taking Foo Fighters from one of the greatest bands, this era, and taking Brian Johnson from ACDC, vocalist, put them together, it works. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine they wouldn't get in, but uh, I guess anything's possible. But they'd be fools. The committee if they don't put them in there, because you want to have a, a nice crowd, and Foo Fighters will give you the rock and roll Hall of Fame flag banner. I mean, there's other artists up for there, but they're not on the same level as Foo Fighters. I mean, so um, are there any people in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that you're disappointed that maybe you feel shouldn't have been in? Uh, there's some artists who have been overlooked. There should be in there, not in there. Uh, Pat Benatar was overlooked last year. She she came up short. I mean, for female rockers, we there's not that many people we can relate to, like Stevie Nicks, Tina Turner, uh, Joan Jett. But uh, Pat Benatar for the '80s, she was the soundtrack for a lot of us growing up. Hit me your best shot. Uh, Love is a battlefield. I mean, Pat Benatar was the voice of rock and roll for females, and I think she's great. She kicked butt. So it's on. Uh, yeah. I want people to see you. Okay. So. Okay, it didn't mean much better. There we so go. So Pat yeah. Benatar has been overlooked. Some people will say last year the team that um, the band that won the the fan book ballot, they have a special fan ballot. Usually they get into the Hall of Fame. They didn't get in. It was uh, Dave Matthews Band. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. Uh, a we call was been able to uh, some the bands like Judas Priest, uh, uh, Ani Main has you know they're up for this year. Um, Motorhead, it's been overlooked. Well, I just like to say for the record, if Iron Maiden is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has no meaning. That's that's just simple. Simple truth. I mean, we have no STP in there yet, no Stone Temple Palace, but you got Pearl Jam in there. I mean, Soundgarden should be in there, they're not in there yet. I mean, it's Chris, Chris Cannell was our generation's voice. 
and he influenced so many people. If anybody watches any contestant shows, uh, America Idol or The Voice, Black Hole Soul has been covered twice. That mm-hmm. speaks a lot about Chris Canal, how influence he had on all of us. So he's a great singer. So, but uh, there's a lot of artists have been overlooked, and sometimes like, look uh, it took a long time. Um, got in there, Def Leppard got in there eventually. Stevie Vaughan got in there eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't understand how it works. But, uh, it's by uh, committee. committee voters, and you have to tw- you're eligible for 25 years of your first time album was released. Hmm. Okay. So, like, U2 got on their first ballot. U2 was still doing good. So, I mean, some people had to wait a long time to get, you know. And there's only one artist been in the Hall of Fame three times. Three times. Eric Clapton? Eric Clapton. Mm-hmm. Cream, Yardbirds, and Solo. Yeah. Now we have artists in twice. All four Beatles are in twice. Solo and Beatles. Hmm. I cool. mean, uh, Robert, uh, Jimmy Page, Yardbirds, Led Zeppelin. You know... Have you ever gone back and tried to listen to the Yellow Birds? I don't think you have, have you? Not recently. It's not that fun. I, so I don't know why they're in there, but I guess if you're from that era, it was totally different. Maybe they were it was the 60s, and you remember had three different guitar players, and Jeff Beck, but not Jimmy at the Page, same time. not at the same time. Right, but they, they weren't, I mean, I guess they were pretty great back then, but I don't know. I, I wasn't impressed by the Yellow Birds. I didn't want to listen to them more than just curiosity, you know. Um, anyway, uh, so we have a guest, guys, boys and girls. Um, thank you for those who are watching live and for those who are watching the replay. Thank you, too. Now, uh, we have a guest named Spider-Man. Um, I don't know if any of you heard of him, but he's actually a wall crawler. He wears red and blue, uh, which are Tom Scuderi's favorite colors. Right, Tom? Yes. Yeah. And he actually draws pictures really well, but he's also... And red is my favorite color. And red is Spider-Man's favorite color, too. And red is also Kai's favorite color. So I'm sorry this show has been usurped from music talk to Spider-Man talk. It's okay for a few seconds. <laughs> it's okay. So here's Spider-Man. There he is in the flesh, and he's hiding behind the microphone. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to... Tom, I'm going to take you back in a time machine. We're going to do a little bit of a time machine okay. tour today. Okay. And uh, we're going to, you know, I was telling Tom that uh, as part of my uh, autobiography exploration, I've been listing up music by year, which albums came out which year. And just kind of, of course, I gravitate towards the albums that matter to me. Of course. And uh, But I also include albums that maybe I don't particularly like, but... I remember from the time period mm-hmm. or had some influence in my life at some point. So starting with 1980, what year were you born, Tom? 1980. 1980. All right. April so 6th. The perfect place to start. So was I. So uh, I'll name some album. You're going to want to stop me at every turn because you're going to have something to say. But here we go. It was a good year for music. ACDC, Back in Black comes out in 1980. That changed music. That changed because the first album with uh, Brian Johnson as lead vocalist because mm-hmm. Bon Scott passed away. So that was a determined album, which was a cheapy album. The band was thinking of breaking up. They got Brian Johnson and that album to be one of the biggest albums of all time, changed rock music. And the song Back to Black is an anthem everywhere you go. It is, you hit those chords, that's mm-hmm. it. You're playing air guitar all the way. <laughs> that's right. With Angus Young. Yeah, and it, it's still one of, I think today it's still one of the, the greatest selling albums of all time. Yeah, it is so. And uh, it's so rare that a, a band loses a iconic singer that's such a unique part of the sound and then replaces uh, the singer with someone who e- becomes even more iconic to the band, arguably so. Yeah. But, uh, well, with a similar voice. Like I found listening to ACDC with Bon Scott and Brian Johnson, when I was young, it didn't, it didn't bother me. Like it sounded like the band for sure. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't notice a big difference. Um, 
Now I could hear the difference more for sure. Yeah, Brian's got more of a rasp mm -hmm. uh, sound. And his, you know, his songs are TNT, Shook Me Up All Night Long, Back in Black. What Bon Scott is, uh, Highway to Hell and Dirty, uh, Deeds. Dirty Deeds and Whole Lot of Rosa and like those type of stuff. But it's too, it works great. So mm -hmm. they were very lucky, bless, and thankfully they put the banner in rock and roll. Yeah, so moving on. Uh, okay, Aerosmith's Greatest Hits comes out in 1980. Kind of interesting to know that they were already around long enough to have a Greatest Hits album by then. Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. That's their first album without Ozzy. That's with Ronnie James Dio. Def Leppard comes out with their first album, On Through the Night. I think later on their better albums came out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would say On Through the Night is an album I have no particular connect affinity. I don't have much fondness for it. Uh, Diamond Head comes out Lighting to the Nations and they were a huge influence on Metallica um, Iron Maiden comes out with their first album Iron Maiden uh, speaking of replacing singers but we'll get to that Judas Priest comes out with British Steel uh, hey Jason what's going on Jason says uh, such encyclopedic knowledge thank you <laughs> uh, that's what we're here for <laughs> yes knowledge equals power there you go knowledge <laughs> equals power <laughs> Uh, Kiss comes out with Unmasked in 1980. Oh, good. And Jason says the audio sounds good. He was helping me uh, prepare for this before. So thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, Kiss comes out with Unmasked, their first album without the mask on. That, that was a big thing. 1980s. I'm not a big Kiss fan, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you like, you know, that's some of the songs, but I'm not, a. I think they're a little overrated. I think. Yeah, no, I, 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 some people will get into a heated debate about with you about that, but I won't. I, I, I'm right with you. I tried. I owned a few Kiss albums. I had a Kiss music book. Uh, it's not my cup of tea, but I, you know, I don't dismiss them. Motorhead comes out with Ace of Spades of all albums, in 1980. Let me. Yeah, that one of the most the, their most iconic song. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne comes out with Blizzard of Oz. That's his debut album with Crazy Train on it. The first time he collaborates with Randy Rhodes. Match made in heaven, those two. Yeah. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz, yeah. Yeah, Ozzy. And then uh, Van Halen comes out with Women and Children First. I don't know the album too well. Ario Speedwagon, High Infidelity. Um, John Lennon and Yoko Ono come on, but out with Double Fantasy that year. And then we know that... That's the year John Lennon. Yeah, December. Taken from us in December. Yeah. Billy Joel comes out with Glass Houses, which has uh, "You May Be Right." That's mm -hmm. a lot of some good. Songs I, I'm a big Billy Joel fan. Yeah, I'm. I like my favorite songs. Reading Start the Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's such a good history of what's going on. Uh, Uptown Girl, uh, Down Alexis. Uh, there's so many good songs of Billy Joel's. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's great. He's iconic. He's a New York native. Yeah. Mr. Piano Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he's one of the, I think I've seen him live four times. Wow. Like, I really cared about him that much. Um, the Cure comes out with Boys Don't Cry. I don't know. If, I don't think that's their, might, that might be their first album. That's when they had a really mm -hmm. almost like punk sound. Uh, Elton John comes out with an album 21 at 33. I don't know the album so well, but. Elton John is someone else I've been a big fan of. You like Elton John? Mm. I respect him, but I'm, he's not my kind of area of music. I'm more like the Al Smith, Led Zeppelin, Beatles, uh, mm, okay. Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I like Peter Gabriel, a Peter Gabriel fan. Uh, Sledgehammer, uh, Digging in the Dirt, yeah. uh, Shot the Monkey. So, Right, and so he mentions Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel's album Peter Gabriel comes out 1980. Should we go to 1981 or you want to jump to a further year? Oh, uh, either one's fine. All right. 1981, some of the albums that are released that stand out. ACDC, For Those About to Rock, We Salute You. Yes. You like that song? Of course, it's iconic. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, everybody does like cover the song. I mean, it's it, ACDC rules, so... Who, who else in the world ever thought that they have to put in an old-fashioned canon in the song? <laughs> it works. You gotta be creative. It works. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. 
Um, so yeah, guys, whoever's listening, guys and gals, if you have comments about the artists we're talking about, you know, chime in. If you have questions for Tom or questions for me about music or our tastes or anything like that. Music all around us. Music is the universal <laughs> language. And music all around us. I mean, you go to ball games, you hear songs. Some good songs, some not so good songs. You know, and then you, wrestling events, I've been wrestling, you know, stuff. And uh, I, you watch TV shows, they play music there. And I got to go to my app, Zam, I know what the artists, what they're playing. Mm-hmm. You know, Josh, I'm crazy, I go, I play back the DVR. It's like, I got to hear the song. I got to get to the artist. I got to know look who it is. Uh, speaking, of, yeah, so let's take a side. Uh, we're going to veer off uh, the, the time machine for a minute and just say, Tom brought up a good point about, or a fun topic, which is how many songs can you think of that have the word rain in it? So for all those of you listening right now live, please type into the chat box any songs that you could think of that have to do with rain or have rain in the title that you might think of to listen to on a rainy day. Tom has a couple. What, what are the ones you think of, Tom? Garbage, Only Happy When It Rains. Of course, yours truly has two songs of rain in the same album, too. <laughs> Rainy day and when it rains. Yes. Uh, I also think of uh, Have You Seen the Rain, CCR. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think Who's the Rain on Me, The Who. I mean, before we get ready, I didn't know the Beatles did this song called Rain. I discovered it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, this. Uh, oh, Blind Mountain, No Rain. Guns N' Roses, November Rain, mm-hmm. and November Rain's a good, it's like two songs, it's like a ballad and it's a rock anthem, I mean, with Slash's guitar. Did, yeah, I just thought, uh, Rainy Day When It Rains, Jason chimed in, he would know that very well since he actually recorded those songs, the actual recording engineer producer of Cornucopia. Hey, Har- hey Harold, what's up? And Harold says... Purple by Purple Rain by Prince. Of course, that's an iconic one too. Purple Rain, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we want to go another song, we could go uh, uh, "Blame It on the Rain," "Million Vanilli." <laughs> I could take you one step further than that. Okay. And this, um, I suspect, this is one of your favorite songs. It's raining men. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's raining men. No, that's not. Hallelujah. <laughs> No, I have to change the channel. I hear that song. I'm sorry. It's not, not my thing, you know. Right. You know Every time to an opinion, you know, it's, it's a song which I don't want it to. If, if it's a November Rain, I'll listen to it. If it's, you know, CCR, it's awesome. So Jason said, not the right genre, but singing in the rain. Hey, we're not uh, confining to genres today. But that's, yeah. That's fair game. And actually... Speaking of old blue eyes, what happened today when we uh, were getting set up for the radio show, Tom? You were playing Frank Sinatra. Saint Frank Sinatra's being played right on our very own um, uh, record player. It was a, it was a record we listened to? Yeah. There was no uh, there was no Wi-Fi needed. No. No. It's, old it's, fashioned. It's old fashioned. We listened to uh, blue, old blue eyes to get us started today. Yeah. Fire and Rain, Jason says, James Taylor. Ooh, this guy's that, that's pulled, a good one. This that's guy's pulling some out from the old old box. All right, Jason. From, from the record, uh, from the records. <laughs> that's a really good, James Taylor's, I think, one of the best singer-songwriters of all time. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, Constantine, uh, uh, maybe you missed it when you said it. He says, only happy when it rains by garbage. Yeah. that's yep. a, yeah, God, that, I was thinking, when I'm, as a crossing guard, I'm working outside. When it's raining heavy, I'm, I'm thinking... That's on garbage. <laughs> right. Or, or they could, you know, like, uh, whoever seen the rain, you know, um, CCR, you know, rain on me. Because when you're getting rained on, you, you feel like garbage. And then you say, oh, I feel like garbage. Garbage. Only happy when it rains. Yeah. <laughs> That's what rain is the hardest part being a crossing guard. I mean, tell you. I mean, I could take the heat. I could take the cold weather. But the rain is the worst. Carl is also crossing guard, too. Oh, guess what? Uh, Tom Scuderi, I want to just you to know that my son Kai, also when he when we cross the street, he, you know, he knows you have a great example of being crossing guard, and he himself is now uh, an unofficial child crossing guard. He always looks both ways and makes sure everyone gets it. That's the right thing to do. Yeah, he's uh, learning to look both ways and carefully cross. Yep. You got um, safety, safety, safety. So, so let's see. Uh, 
So Con, oh, by the way, Constantine Mediuk will be on Music Philosophy and More this coming Monday. Okay. Uh, oh, hi, Tom. I'll and, see you later in bowling. <laughs> yeah, Thomas Tabone uh, just said, any KISS fans? I guess he missed the part where Tom said he's not a, this Tom said he's not a KISS fan. <laughs> I, look, they, they did have to do, you know, I know uh, Paulus is a big, huge Kiss fan, your buddy, friends, of this, <laughs> but it was time to be, I mean, not, I'm not saying the worst band, I'm just saying they're not, I'm not going to, they're not my band. Now, I yeah. grew up with Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, Beatles, I mean, now you got the Foo Fighters, you got uh, U2, uh, Three Days Grace, I saw Disturb Live, I saw... Uh, Pearl, you know, Pearl Jam, I wish I had seen live. I haven't seen live yet, but... Uh. All right, so let's rein it in. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> let's rein it in. Um, there's a, one more Rain song I could think of that I like a lot. And I can't believe I forgot the name, but it's Smashing Pumpkins' song. It goes, Rain falls on everyone. Uh, on, on the Machina album. If anyone yeah. knows the name of that song, please type it in. It's, it's a really great song. I like some Smashing Pumpkins songs. Yeah, uh, uh, I was a big, big fan. I think. Yeah, uh, some of the songs were good. I mean, the videos were pretty good. And he's also he's also a, a wrestling uh, owner, Billy Corgan. <laughs> he's with uh, NWA. That's his thing. So he's been a wrestling fan for a while. Before that, he had Impact Wrestling for a short time. So, but uh, Billy keeps busy. You know, he, he pays the bills. Music pays the bills. You know, being a singer songwriter. So. Mm hmm. All right. So back in the time machine. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to 1981. Well, we were one years old that year. <laughs> yep. Okay, so Def Leppard comes out with their second album, High and Dry. Getting there, but not... Yeah, getting there. Yeah, getting there. Getting the feet wet. You know, we're not getting the, the monster songs yet. Pour Some Sugar On Me. Uh, and other great songs. Yeah, no, that that's not I know. my favorite album either, of course. Uh, Iron Maiden, Killers. Second album. A lot of people swear by this album and say it's one of the best. I, I like it. Uh, it's definitely not on my top list. Some people who are fans of Paul Diano, the first singer, really are, are diehard. Um, I do appreciate both by far. I think Bruce Dickinson is my preference. Mm -hmm. That whole era. I, mean, I know you're not particularly yeah. a maiden, but... Um, all right. Uh, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts comes out with I Love Rock and Roll. That's iconic. Iconic. I'm not a fan, but... Uh, I like the song, but uh, I'm not all her stuff, but I love rock and roll, and they don't always call it by Britney Spears. <laughs> so. Yeah. Actually, speaking of... Uh, well, not speaking of... Um, we mentioned Kiss, and that made me think of... You said Paulie Z, and Paulie Z's brother Dave Z, who's a friend uh, who passed on. He uh, he actually toured with Joan Jett. Did, did you know that? He was played in Joan Jett's band for a while. No, I didn't know that. In high school, yeah, sorry, when we were in college. He was wow. tour on tour with Joan Jett, and he would come back and tell me the stories. <laughs> Playing bass. Um, I have a better reputation that a good song for Joan Jett. She, you know, I mean, she's not like one trick pony, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Motley Crue's first album comes out in 81. Ooh. Too Fast for Love. Just puts them on the map. I like that album. It was just a glorified demo, mm -hmm. and the guy's voice sounds real. Vince Neil's really high pitched and kind of out of tune, but it's cool. It's cool. Album. Tommy Lee, awesome drummer, crazy yeah. but awesome. Yeah, I mean, you see the stuff in a tour when he does. I mean, upside down his stuff, and he's he's remarkable. I mean, he's definitely entertaining for drummer. Definitely entertaining. And, uh, I like some of the other stuff. You know, Doctor Feel Good and uh, Smoke Good in the Boy. <laughs> in the boys room and uh there's so many other molly crew cool you know the bad boys i i was always a molly crew fan i, I don't know about the um integrity of their personalities i don't know but i still like listening to them and kind of keeping up with checking out into interviews and history yeah. a little bit um okay 1982 uh, Aerosmith comes out with Rock in a Hard Place. I don't know if you're much of an Aerosmith fan. I'm a big Aerosmith fan, but I, I not the early stuff. No, I, I mean I got into Pump. Yeah, um, Pump Pump. Yeah, Pump album which came later on, and the early stuff we had the greatest hits. that had like Love and Ella. I mean no, um, Walk This Way and uh, a lot of other stuff. Uh, but 
I think Aerosmith got better as the years got on. Permanent Vacation is a great album. Pump, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, you know, Jamie's Got a Gun was a great song, and Eat the Rich later on, and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Uh, Iron Maiden comes out with Number of the Beast. It's certainly a legendary album, which is um, the first album with Bruce Dickinson. And uh, uh, Judas Priest comes out Screaming for Vengeance. Kiss comes out with Creatures of the Night. Motorhead, Iron Fist is 1982. Um, Ozzy Osbourne, Speak of the Devil, which is a live album. Uh, Michael Jackson comes out with Thriller. And we know uh, Eddie Van Halen plays a vocal, uh, guitar solo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, what an enormous album that was. But remember, he didn't get paid down for that. I found out. Eddie Van Halen, when he did his... Oh, he just did it as like a pro bono thing? He didn't get a dime out of that one. Yeah, that's... That must hurt. Because imagine... But I mean, he, he was a millionaire anyway, right? So, I, I think. So, uh... Um, all right, so Thomas DeBone is saying that Aerosmith and Kiss played together in a concert back in the early 2000s. That would be quite a show to catch, huh? Aerosmith and Kiss. Yeah, you got the uh, Jeans and Steven Tyler. <laughs> Pretty big personalities right there. Yeah, well, well, actually, you know what they do have in common? Uh, Aerosmith and Kiss, well, certainly they have in common. They're a good comparison to make, kind of. They both started in the early 70s. I, I think Aerosmith technically started in the 60s. Um, and uh, Kiss, maybe too, or, or very early 70s. And um, they're certainly a career band they're both uh they're, they're they have a great work ethic both kiss at least the two main guys didn't get involved with drinking and drugs i believe i think that's kind of what certainly what gene simmons is known for but uh paul stanley i'm not sure paul stanley is definitely well respected you know guitarist and you know those two together it was you know that those two there's no kiss Right. And then Sam Smith, it mainly comes down to Joe Perry and Steven Tyler. Big Joe Perry fan. Great guitars. Great guitars. I mean, his guitar works are awesome. I like Joe Perry. Uh, Steven, I like his vocals. I mean, there's some stuff later on in the 90s and up, but not big Kino, but like, I like Al Smith's like, permanent vacation and, you know, Pomp and there's some of the earliest, I mean, like, uh, like Do Looks Like Ladies, a classic song. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, actually, I'll say something about that in a second. But okay. uh, I just remembered that what I said that um, Aerosmith is basically about Steven Tyler and Joe Perry, like they're kind of the main guy. It, that that's maybe not so true. I mean, obviously, they it would have a hard time continuing without them. But the other guys in the band are super solid. The drummer's amazing. Uh, I think technically uh, the other guitarist in Aerosmith is it Brad Whitford. Mm-hmm. I think he's better than Joe Joe Perry. It's like more technically proficient. I and mean, Hamilton player. was the bass, and Joey Kramer is the drummer. Right, right. So right. Joey's a good drummer. Very good drummer. He's he's he's, he's my yeah. I, I'll put him in my top twenty drummers. Hey, he's put, he's really he's fun really to listen to. Great sound. So I mean, they're all you can't really remove any of them. No, but. Uh, I know what you're saying. It's like similar. They're the, they're the two piece, main pieces. I mean, they all work together, but those are like two things. Like Bon Jovi, Richie and John Bon Jovi. Yeah. It's that similar thing. Like those are two main ones. I mean, you have everybody else around them, but those are two main nucleus. Like, you know, the writing partners, singer song, I mean, singer songwriters, you yeah, know. Certainly the biggest egos, it would seem, right? Uh, not in this, doesn't necessarily mean in a bad way, but no. the most like pronounced character. Anyway, uh, yeah, okay, enough about Aerosmith and Kiss. Um, so let, let's give him another question. I'm, I don't want to go to snow because we're in uh, we're in spring, mm-hmm. so like songs about rain. So how about uh, can you think of any songs with? Um, okay, you said so. Tom was saying earlier that there's no songs about bowling, and yes. he's, he's sad about this. We need and a bowling song. We need a bowling song. And there's no songs about crossing guards. Yes. Uh, I remember that when I was teaching piano, there was a, s- a song about crossing guards. I don't know if it had words, but there's a picture and it was, the title was related. I imagine in Japanese, there's a song about crossing guard. 
but um, in good old American uh, songbook. I don't know if we have a crossing guard song. So for you songwriters out there, you have an assignment. We need a crossing guard song and a bowling song. So how many songs can you think of that relate to baseball? Oh, there's a lot. Really? You could think. I mean, the most obvious one, John Fogarty, center field. Yeah. Iconic. I mean, I got to see the baseball bat, which he wrote the song for it in the Baseball Hall of Fame, which is like awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we went 2015 to Baseball uh, Hall of Fame Museum, which is one of my dream dra- trip, one of my all-time favorite things ever, going to Baseball Hall of Fame. I and mean, seeing John Bogus' guitar for the center field was awesome. Yeah, I. Uh, some of you guys take me out to the ball game, Thomas says. Yeah, absolutely. The That and center field are probably the two most iconic baseball songs. Um it's a fun note about center field. Um, that was a song that my father really liked. And my father did not particularly like music. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't dislike it, but not actively. He didn't yeah. collect music. But he loved that song. And uh, I would say if I did cover any John Fogarty songs, including CCR, I would probably cover center field first. And as, as some people may know, I have a song called John Fogarty. And yes, excellent song. <clears throat> thank you. And, and we're going to have a... Uh, a bunch of videos coming out very soon that are um, uh, all versions, cover versions of the John Fogarty song uh, that I wrote um, called, I'm going to call it Doing It Like Fogarty. It's going to be pretty exciting. Okay. So that's to come soon. And we're going to have Jason Hills on the podcast within the awesome. next month or so, or month or two maybe. And he's going to, we're going to talk about this project of recording the uh well, the album Cornucopia with the song John Fogarty on it. Mm-hmm. And then these videos that are coming out soon. This kind of new doing it like Fogarty project. Uh, Jason says it's comedy, but Stephen Lynch, the bowling song. Okay. I, would, I was thinking if you do a bowling song, you probably get a lot of fans and you might have to go the comedy route. I was thinking like Jack Black could probably do a really good. Hey, it's, you got song. strikes, spares, splits. You got 10 frames in bowling. You, I mean, the pins, they, they can knock them down. They'd be screaming. So it'd be a good rock song for bowling. You could do a rock song, rock comedy song. And, oh, we got, well, so we have one by uh, Stephen Lynch. And good news, uh, there's a crossing guard song by the Rock Rocknosaurus a kids group. Okay. So we're on the way. Okay. It's, I mean, Kai, I'm, I'm going to have to show him the song because he, you know, is all about the crossing guards. And uh, Glory Days by Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Was that related to baseball? In, in the video has, you know, baseball. Glory Days. It's in the video. Okay, all right, all right. But it's not words? Um, I, I, you kind of kind of reference it. Like, you know, like you kind of like, you know. I mean, Meatloaf, two, a, two out of three. You know, we had the Fuzudo, you know, commentary in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, you mentioned bases loaded on your uh, rain song. Hmm. I do. Yes. I was gonna ask you how you come up with the bases loaded with the, on a rain, but you know. Was... <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up playing baseball, so yeah. um, actually, there's one other song that I have a, a baseball re- reference. Um, a song called Champ, which uh, was in my band Modus Tollens, and there's a line about swinging for the fences. So I remember my coach when I was little league would tell me, don't swing for the fences. This is what I would do. Meaning like when I got to bat, I want to hit a home run. And because I was swinging so hard, I wasn't keeping my eye on the ball and working on getting a hit and I would strike out a lot. So he said, don't swing for the fences. So that's where that reference comes. And there's a lot in the old time, there's a lot of baseball songs. There's songs about Mickey Mantle and uh, stuff like that. Here he is. Woody Mays. Here's the boy swinging for the fences. <laughs> hey, home runs are very attractive, you know, but it's all not about home runs. You got to get on base. A single is good, a double, a triple. So uh, Harold says, Paradise by the Dashboard Light had Phil Rizzuto. Yes. On it. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what I was referring to. Yeah. And, 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 Interestingly enough, Me Love does have a song, Bat Out of Hell. Yeah. I don't think it means baseball bat, but 
Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure there's actually tons of, of baseball reference. Yeah, um, there's you got you got to look down deep. Yeah, I mean, this you have bands who use a reference like basketball and outfield, you know. So like, you know, you got to look the, the, the surrounding. You can look for it. Mm -hmm. You got to look for it. I mean. All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's jump. Let's go back in time. So let's jump a little bit. Uh, okay. okay, let's go to uh, 1995. Oh, 95. Okay, we're in, we're in um, Madison. Days of Madison High School. Yes. We didn't know each other. No. Small no. world, big high school. Uh, you know, we have famous people getting mad at Madison. Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Schumer. Uh, Judge Judy, the late uh, Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So, we got, and uh, we, got, we came out of Madison. We came pretty good. We came out of Madison. <laughs> Jason Hills came out yeah. of Madison. We may have a few more watchers, viewers who are Madison alumni. Golden and, Knights. Class of 98. Golden Knights, yeah. Uh, we're Golden Knights, is that right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so <clears throat> a few changes happened in music. Uh, Fear Factory comes out with Demanufacture, mm -hmm. which was <clears throat> brutally heavy, and this like electronic drum sound. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Iron Maiden comes out with the X Factor. Now this is <clears throat> their first album without Bruce Dickinson. Uh, um, Dream Theater comes out with a change of seasons EP. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers comes out with One Hot Minute. Do you remember that album? Um, probably the singles that came out of it. Probably. Uh, I mean, Chili Peppers. Are, I like some songs Chili Peppers. I mean, I know about an album Chili Peppers, but you know, Scar Tissue and uh, uh, Give It Away Now and uh, you know, Calification. You know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, this, so One Hot Minute was a little weird because John Frusciante, the main guitarist <clears throat> that people associate with Chili Peppers, had left. And this was the one with uh, Dave Navarro. Oh, from Jane's Addiction. From Jane's Addiction, yeah. yeah. And I think they, they had a song called Roller Coaster. Oh, that was a big song, Roller Coaster. Yeah, I didn't really like it. It didn't sound like them to me. Yeah, it was different. But um, anyway, that was 95. Yeah. ACDC. Uh, ACDC comes out with an album called Ball Breaker, which I don't really remember too well. No, they're pretty, they're pretty good. Uh, oh, Lana Smart Set. That kind of ties into uh, Foo Fighters because Taylor Hawks was the drummer for Lana Smart Set. And Dave Grohl was looking for a drummer because the first drummer he had left didn't get along. And, you know, they broke in the drummer. He needed a drummer. So, you know, and he pulled to Taylor, asked him, and Taylor's like, you know, I want to be in a rock and roll band. I want to be uh, a drummer for an artist. So that was the best thing that happened to Foo Fighters. Changing point, turning point, Taylor Hawks, top five, top ten greatest drums of all time, in my opinion. I mean, Taylor's awesome. Uh, yeah, I love listening to him. So uh, I would love to. If I was doing a rock song and he was going to play in it, I'd be more than happy about that. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Oasis, What's the Story, Morning Glory. Ooh. It's one of the biggest albums. The Gallagher Brothers, they cannot get along. <laughs> cannot get along. To this day, we fought the Davis Brothers were bad from the Kinks back in the 60s. They make them look worse because they can't stand each other, Gallagher Brothers. It's a shame because they're talented. The talented group, the brothers are really good, and it just can't get along. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, Radiohead, and, you know, not a big fan of Radiohead. Right, uh, they're yeah. still going strong, no doubt. Gwen Stefani rocks. So Tragic yeah. Kingdom, that was yeah. a very monumental album. Yeah, Gwen, she looks right her age and still kicking butt. I mean, solo with no doubt. I mean, who would figure her and Blake Shelton? That's a pretty odd couple, but they work together. And then we see Foo Fighters. Yes. And Garbage album. Garbage comes out with Garbage. Yeah. I mean, um, Bruce Vick ties in everything because he was a uh, producer for Nirvana and Pearl Jam. He produced with Foo Fighters later on. 
mm-hmm. and he was a drummer for uh, Garbage. So he's a, a, one of the top producers at the time. So yeah, he was a drummer for Garbage. Mm-hmm. I, I thought maybe baseball. Okay, uh, Foo Fighters comes out with their debut album. Jewel comes out with Pieces of You. I, I, that for me, I remember that was a good. Yeah, album. Jewel was a very good singer songwriter. I mean, uh, later on she did uh, more popish, which some people like, some people didn't like. You know, uh, Green Day. Still going strong, Green Day. Rock and roll, they're in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Green Day comes out with Insomniac in 95. Oh, good album, very good album. Mm-hmm. I I like to see him live, I haven't seen him live. They're definitely one of my bands I haven't seen live. I would like, I would like to see him. Uh, oh, Silverchair. Silverchair Ooh. comes out with Frog Stomp. That oh, was their yeah. First That's from, they're from Australia. I remember mm-hmm. they were playing heavy uh, uh, when during that era, you know, um, oh, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, uh, very good guitarist. Didn't do the vocals for the songs, but he played. Oh, no, no, no he, he just named the band, but he was a very good guitar player. He was like the next generation of Steve Avon influences. Right. Um, let's see what we got here. We got Neil Young, Young's Neil Uncle Neil was, you know, big you know, Pearl Jam, jammed them up. I mean, uh, Neil Young does one of my favorite songs, Keep a Rockin' the Feet World. And Pearl Jam and them do a great look on YouTube, great jam together. They did in the music, uh, MTV Music Awards years ago, and they've done it numerous times in Toronto, all different spots. Them together, perfect. Old and new. Perfect compilation. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do we got? Matthew Sweet. I heard of him. Not too... Oh, Collect the Soul. That was good, Collect the Soul. That was good. Very good, Collect the Soul. They could, they could definitely rock. Okay, now we're in 97. Um, uh, Megadeth comes out with Cryptic Writings. Metallica comes out with Reload. Any thoughts on Reload? Or did you know that album at all? Uh, there wasn't. It was. It was a change in Metallica, I believe. It was like the change in yeah, the same members, but the the, the, the style. Music. The style was changing a little bit. Yeah. The music, yeah. Metallica. I mean, I like the songs. Uh, Seek and Destroy, uh, which is theme song for Sting, my favorite wrestler of all time. All right. And the Sandman, ECW fans there. Mm-hmm. Uh, also theme song for Mariano Rivera for Yankee fans. You know. Can I put that in there? You know. oh, okay. Uh, but Metallica's got a, a long list of stuff. They've, you know, been around for so long, kick some butt. Uh, you got oh, oh, one. Radiohead comes out with OK Computer. I would say that's mm-hmm. their best album, in my opinion. Anyway. I know you're a big fan of Sarah McLaughlin. I like her. Yeah. yeah surfacing come, was comes out in '97. Oh, Everclear. Right. So much for the after- Oh, that was a good album. That was good. I had that yeah, album. Yeah, Albert Clear, So Much for the Afterglow. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah, Father of Mine was really a tough song. I mean, uh, about, you know, pain, you know, having your father around. And mm-hmm. they had so many good songs, uh, Everclear. They were really good. Uh, Art is a really good singer-songwriter. So. Mm-hmm. Art is his name? Yeah, Art, Art of Suckers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, we got The Car. Oh, what we got? Uh, the Cure. Um, the Cure, The uh, Singles. Oh, uh, Jimi uh, Hendrix. Ah, Jimmy. Right, Jimi Hendrix. Comes out, uh, they released the Experience Hendrix, the best of Jimi Hendrix, and I bought that cassette in around that time, 97. It was good. <clears throat> James Horner, Titanic Music from the Motion Picture. That was a great soundtrack. I know you loved it, Tom. You listen to it every night. No, yeah, put you to sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry, probably but no, probably it, it was, I thought it was so beautiful, but yeah, it may be beautiful, but not my thing. Jimi Hendrix, um, that's my guy. I mean, I grew up with Jimi Hendrix, uh, you know, Purple Haze, uh, Hey Joe, Cross Town Traffic, uh, or everything, uh, or your experience, you know. So, Jimmy, is, I think, the greatest guitar player of all time, number one, always number one. Okay, let's, while we're on the topic, let's throw it out to our friends who are still listening. Uh, greatest guitar players of all time. Let's see if we can get anyone to chime in. Uh, I uh, will name three. Okay. okay. That I, at the moment, because they it changes all the time. Yeah. But that I could easily say I feel good about. I would say, I'd say put Joe Satriani up there. Mm-hmm. Guitar players. Hmm. 
I mean, actually, Jason Hill says Prince. I actually, I give Jason credit. It's kudos. Prince is a very good guitar player. Underrated, very good. Uh, anybody, I recommend, watch a clip of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When he got inducted, he plays My Guitar Gently Weeps. He doesn't sing in the song. Tom Petty sings in the song with George's son and Jeff Lynn. Prince steals the show. Yeah. He stole those best performance of the night. Him doing guitar gently weeps. Prince, I always, I, Prince is up there. I, I definitely up there. So, guitar players. I, my, maybe 25, but not that, but he's up there. I, I give him kudos for guitar player. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Harold says David Gilmore. Oh, that's a good choice. That's a good choice. You know, Pink Floyd, very good. Gilmore's really good. But he's not on my list, but he's in, he's he's good. Yeah, for me, excuse me, my list would have to be at least 50 mm -hmm. people along, but I, I really would have to say Randy Rhodes, just because. No, he's a, that's a good choice. Much, I would uh, expect it. I mean, he, him and Ozzy would go awesome. I mean, Randy Rhodes, I mean, his guitar work still, I mean, lives on. I mean, you hear that his riffs of his songs, you hear Ozzy, like, you want to play the guitar, you know, you play a guitar, you know, it's so awesome. But, uh. Mm -hmm. He's up there, but my guys are Steve Avon. I mean, Crossfire. Uh, he does a great, uh, great. Oh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Voodoo Child. Awesome cover. He uh, Walk the Tightrope. Uh, he has so many body works. I mean, blues, rock and roll. I mean, we lost him too, way too young. Oh, Steve Avon would be certainly in my top 10, I would say. Uh, Thomas says uh, Slash. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I was about to say it, but I I didn't feel it's my place to say Slash because I I'm I'm, I'm I give a two thumbs up for Slash. Slash is my top ten. I mean, I know we, people disagree, but I don't consider Guns N' Roses Guns N' Roses without Slash. I know because it's Axel, but Slash has played a big part in that. His guitar work is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, Welcome to the Jungle, November Rain. Uh, Sweet Child of Mine, Paradise City. I mean, there's so much his body work, his guitar work. Slash is iconic. Yeah, Slash is one of, uh, as far as best guitarists of all time, I, I don't know if I could put him there, but. He's up there, he's up there. He's but up, for me, to, as terms of my favorite to listen to, he's definitely. He changed. I mean, his no, guitar riffs man. Slash the hair metal. It slashed it. It mm -hmm. busted right open. Guns N' Roses came out and then... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't argue that. Harold just uh, mentioned someone. Ah, uh, that's another one on my list. Top 10. Eddie Van Halen. The late Eddie Van Halen. Van Halen. Yeah, it's, it's hard to not put him on a list of greatest guitarists. Uh, um, with, he's up there. One song that gets overlooked is... Uh, anybody who watched the movie Twister, the soundtrack, Human Beings, Sammy sings the song... I think it's one of the best uh, 80s guitar work, oh. Human Beings, uh, besides, you know, Jump and uh, Half a Teacher. And there's so many different stuff. Eddie, iconic, uh, his guitar work. I mean, his music would live on, his guitar work. He's top 10. I mean, he, you really got me cover the Kings. And he took that song, which is, Dave Davis is a great guitar player himself. He influenced them. And he took that song to a whole different level. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. Definitely Eddie's up there. Jason says, Hendrix, B.B. King, and Eddie Van Halen. What do you think? Uh, we, we talk about Hendrix and yeah. Eddie. Uh, what do you think about B.B. King? Oh, he's he's definitely all time. You got to put him up there, B.B. King. Very respected. Blues, very respected. You, he, he influenced so many people. B.B. King's definitely in there. He's on my list. If you don't like, he'll be in there, but not in my Certain lists. I mean, mm -hmm. I have Steve Avon, uh, Eddie Van Halen, Slash, Jimmy, um, Eric Clapton, uh, Jimmy Page, uh, Pete Townsend. Um, well, so let me pause you there. Jason says that uh, John Mayer is underrated. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. I, I'll throw that motion. Yeah, I don't know if he's underrated or it's just that like people just don't pay attention to guitarist like the because his his timing was a little late so people stopped paying attention to guitarists so much after the 90s i feel but uh john mayer's playing is really something special uh he i see he's, he's a lot he's he can good. rock he can and rock 
the song Neon, if you listen to the guitar work in that, I don't know what the heck he's doing. I give you another really name. Good. Uh, this is a current in the artist. Who I've, we talked in, in the past. I've, Jack White. <laughs> Jack White is awesome. He's in my top 10 guitar players. I mean, he could change music. I mean, he could play other instruments too, like bass and drum, but he's guitar. Awesome. He's uh, right up there. Also, another guitar player I got put up there. For your Queen fans, Brian May. Okay. Brian May. Well, I'll tell you that Brian May's guitar sound is very well respected in the guitar community. It's so unique. It's, it's almost like a toy. I, I, it's so hard to describe. And uh, so really give him a lot of credit for creating that sound mm -hmm. and, and using it throughout the years. Uh, Jason says that uh, John Mayer is, un, uh, well, is underrated. He said that uh, people mainly know him as a singer. So that might be why. They don't pay attention to his guitar work. Yeah, you know, he's a good singer songwriter, and the, I, agree, I agree. You, we all agree. John May is definitely, un, I think, underrated guitar player. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I guess that's fair. I, so. I, I, underrated. I think he gets over another guy guitar player gets, I think, over overlooked is uh, Lindsey Buckingham. Okay. Because think about it, he comes to Fleetwood Mac with Stevie Nicks. Fleetwood Mac was a blues band. They come in there, change the whole genre, and Fleetwood Mac becomes superstar. And Lindsay's guitar work is like awesome. So, mm -hmm. uh, Lindsay Buckingham, I seen him live uh, at uh, the townhouse, and he was fantastic. Solo a couple years ago, so but he was awesome. Lindsay's right up there for guitar plays. He gets, I think, he gets a little overshadowed because you think of Gilmore, Brian May, Jimmy, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page. Uh, 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 we just talked about Joe Perry from Alice right before, but uh, there's there's a new guy in town, which if you haven't heard him yet, I want you to check him out. His name is Joe Robinson. He won maybe like Australia's Got Talent or something like that. This guy is real good, and he can play these what's called chord solos, mm -hmm. like these jazz songs. Do the bass, the chords, the melody all at the same time using pedals too to loop it and smooth as butter. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, and, and he's out there. He, like he teaches. You can find him and take lessons in his class, group classes or whatever he does. But uh, yeah, he's something special, Joe Robinson. I give you another guitar player. I mean, he's in the next gen, this generation. I think go further. Gary Clark Jr. Gary Clark Jr. Uh, I see him in the Grammys, and he did a tribute. Uh, I seen Jam with Keith Urban. I forgot who they did. It, it was a tribute for, but it was like really good. And Gary Clark Jr., I like to see him live. He's definitely known for his guitar work. He's like one of these generations. Besides Jack White and other artists, Gary Clark Jr. is definitely uh, up there for guitar work. All right. Um, I uh, have to say for guitarists, uh, Adrian Smith of Iron Maiden is one of my favorites. And then Halloween's uh, Michael Weeketh and um, Kai Hansen. Uh, there's another guy in Halloween, a few other guys who played for Halloween that were great too. But uh, yeah, Michael Week at the Kai Hansen, Adrian Smith for me, uh, mm -hmm. really, really. And John Petrucci of the Dream Theater, if you ever heard him, he's a complete madman. And then there's a lot of acoustic guys that are like like real music, music. I don't know how else to say, like yeah. real get pure guitar, like drawing the sound out of the wood, you know, people that not relying so much on electric electronic. Yeah. I mean, I did James Taylor very good for, for acoustic guitar. Yeah. yeah. I did James Taylor was really good for acoustic guitar. Yes. Yeah, Jim Croce was really oh, good. Oh, Jim Croce is another one. Player. Really good. But acoustic, it's, it's different. I mean, uh, than electric, but uh, somebody could do both. Uh, Richie Sabon, Bon Jovi. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did 12 shows also, Richie. Uh, is it that yeah. a, uh, he's up there for guitar player and uh for you two fans we can't forget about the edge <laughs> edge the I, I i don't know what he's good at except that i know it's hard to copy him he's very good i he's on my top 15 he's in there he's i think all the songs uh sunday blaze sunday and new year's day and uh you know uh, elevation and all the stuff that you two is the body work, you know, his guitar work is 
It's really good. All right, so shall we get back in the time machine? Okay, we'll go back to the time machine. <clears throat> All right, um, 2000. Ooh, 2000. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Disturbed comes out with The Sickness. <sighs> Seen them live at the Mass Square Garden. Disturbed is awesome. Really? I mean, awesome live. So I'm a three days grace with my brother and my buddy Nick, I met after the show in Paletti. Uh, Disturb and Three Days Grace was awesome at the Garden. That was okay. definitely up there with best one of the best concerts I seen. But Foo Fighters, who has a fifteen number one hmm. all time. Uh, okay, so Halloween comes out with the Dark Ride. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh, Iron God. Maiden comes out with Brave New World. Ooh, Godsmack, they're good. Godsmack comes out That's with The Wake. Uh, this is all two thousand. Oh, oh, oh. Kill, Kill Switch Engage comes out with uh, their eponymous album. I, I, uh, I think it's their first album. Mm -hmm. um, Stewart says uh, he feels that Vernon Reed is underrated. Oh, that's a good choice. Red Lemon Color. Thank you, Stewart. Definitely Ver Vernon Reed. Definitely, he's really good. Yeah, his so his. I just picture like silly string when I hear it. It's just so wild. Uh, I, I love him. I love his playing. I mean, uh, seems Sunshine, like a cool guy. Too. Sunshine and Love, they did cover of Cream. Yeah. They took that song. He took that song to a whole different level. Vern took that song to a whole different level. His guitar work. That's from True Life soundtrack. Look it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Vern V, The Living Color. The movie was pretty good, but the song, Sunshine and Love, doing Cream and Living Color, not that at a ballpark. And. Vern Reed definitely up there for guitar players. Mm -hmm. Besides, uh, you know, cult personality, Elvis is dead, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, good choice. Fun fact: um, I did I did cover uh, "Sunshine of Your Love" with with my uh, blues band in two thousand one or so, and that's on. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. I posted it, and uh, I did cover uh, "Cult of Personality" with the band District Twenty Two. I was in. Which is also up on YouTube, <clears throat> um, but uh, you wouldn't be able to put. You'd have to kind of type the name of, type a few things properly to find it. But if anyone wants to hear it, I'll send you the link. Um, okay, we got um, Lincoln Park's cool. Lincoln Park hybrid theory. Anything about Lincoln Park besides the sad ending there? Uh, Chester had a great voice. He had a great voice and. Uh... I could listen to songs and it's such a powerful voice and uh, the songs are good. I mean, dark but good. But the, the uh, next band, uh, skip over Limp Bizkit. Uh, your favorite? Your favorite? You don't talk about? Your no. Limp Bizkit. No, I always had changed channel. You have like seven T-shirts of Limp Bizkit, don't you? Limp Bizkit. Oh, I'm just saying, not my band. Never like Fred Durst. I uh, never, never like their songs. I don't think they're good, my opinion, you know, but I don't think they're as good as other bands. So it's like, Bleh. Bleh. We, 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 you're talking to the choir here. We don't, I'm not going to defend Limp Bizkit at all. Don't worry. Um, Jason says, asks, uh, was that a mashup with STP, right? So yes, when, when I did this song, Cult of Personality with District 22, One of my songs. we did a, a medley. It was a mashup, Cult of Personality, Vaseline. Ooh. And then back into Cult of Personality. And we did it live in New York, and uh, there's a good recording of it, fortunately. So I'll send you a link if you want yeah, to that's Yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. I mean, uh, that's good songs right there. Um, Marilyn Manson comes out with an album in 2000. Uh, <laughs> not a big fan of his. I mean, he butchered a, uh, we call it a... Sweet Dream. Sweet Dream, yeah. I'm not a big fan of Marilyn Manson. Uh, Mudvayne, do you remember them? Uh, yeah, kind of. Not really a big fan. Uh, Pantera, Reinventing the Steel, comes mm -hmm. out in 2000. That was... Oh, uh, ACDC, that's good. Stiff up the lip. Mm -hmm. that's, that was good. I remember that. Um, a Perfect Circle comes out with Mare de Gnomes in 2000. That was a good album. Do you know anything about Perfect Circle? No. You know the singer is? James Maynard Keenan. Okay. From Tool. The same singer. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, Tool I heard of, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Alice Smith, not a good album. Not a good album. Which, which one? Just Push Play, 2001. Oh, that was 2001. It was no. 2000. Oh, oh, I was good. Uh, so, At the Drive-In, do you remember them at all? 
No. Oh, okay. no There's one arm scissor. No. No. Uh, Alice in Chains is awesome. Alice in Chains comes out with their live album. Uh, Slash's Snake Pit comes out with an album. Ain't Life Grand in 2000. Typo Negative comes out with After Dark. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn band. Um, all right, so now we're in 2001. Alice in Chains' greatest hits. Alice in Chains, you know, really good. Uh, lo I mean, Black Label Society. Are you a fan of that at all? That's uh, no. Zach Wilde, no. I mean, yeah. No. Um, Alien Air Farm. They had a good cover of uh, Smooth Criminal, <laughs> and they had another song off uh, for uh, Spider Man, uh, Bug Spite. Okay. It was in the soundtrack of Spider Man. Pretty mm -hmm. good. I mean, Alien Air Farm was silly, silly. But it would, I liked them. They're okay. Oh, we got Nickelback. Yeah, I have that out. That, that is where we're going to disagree. So, Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> Silver Side Up. Oh, I stick up for Nickelback so well. I like them from Canada. I like their album. I played that to death. I think they were cool. Great band from Canada. I'm tired to my opinion, but I think they were good. I think I remember, Chad was good. I remember hanging out with Jason, was it 2005 or 2007, in Albuquerque. Jason Hills, uh, visiting, he was living there and driving around at night, going to a bar, or I don't know where we are going, and Nickelback cranking in the car, and it was like new single, and I was just, I was just disgusted, <laughs> you know, they were, I couldn't deny that they were polished, and they, were, they wrote songs well, and they sounded great, but just some felt really disingenuous about them to me, but. Whatever, you know, I I respect, we, we don't agree on everything. I know, uh, but Nickelback is a soft spot, uh, Nickelback. I mean, I think they were better than uh, some other bands that came out, uh, but uh, there was a lot of bands that came out of Canada, but they were like the, like the biggest one that came out of there. Uh, I actually liked the album, the album before that, The State. Never liked that album. That was, that was their mm -hmm. uh, leader of the men and... Uh, they had mushroom. They had a song, a mushroom song. Uh, they were. I thought they were good. I mean, I can understand people liking them, but they were one of my bands. I played over and over again. My iPod and definitely a good song. Bone too because it kick butt. You know, not the ballad songs. I can't do ballad songs and they go back. I know, but I gotta do the rock kick butt songs. I think the ballad songs are. Uh... Picture or photograph? Yeah, they, no, but they're, they're good. But I think I can't do them for if I'm bowling. I need, oh, I, need, no. I, need, I, need I need high energy. Rock and roll songs, you know. Uh, Jason says Albuquerque or ABQ radio was limited. I think most radio throughout, uh, and uh, certainly at that time, early 2000s, uh, anything pop was going to give you a very limited playlist. You know? Here's a band I disagree with. Which one? System Row Down. Oh, okay. I'm curious to hear about that. I never liked him. He, my brother was a big Sister of a Down fan. We definitely did not see eye to eye. Most fans, we do see eye to eye, my, me and my brother. But uh, Sister of a Down is one thing. We just, different opinions. I mean, his, one of his favorite bands is Clutch. Very underrated band. I know. I came across Clutch as I was doing this, and I remember your, your brother likes it, so I, I checked it out. Uh, I see him twice. I'm not a fan. I bought my brother. I bought two times. We saw Clutch live. We saw him at Central Park with Mastodine and um, uh, Graveyard. Graveyard was a great band from Sweden. Great garage band. They were good. Uh, Mastodine was really um, different and really. And uh, Clutch had the thing. I Clutch was good. The second time we saw him was, uh, I think it was Urban Plaza, I think. And uh, my brother enjoyed it. it was, I cheated him, so I, he got to see Crutch for free twice. I bought for his birthday gift, so. Nice. It was a better brother than me. <laughs> That's just one of his favorite bands. So let's see. Uh, Stuart says, I thought Greg Wells, Greg Walls, is underrated guitarist from Anthrax, my favorite band from the early 90s. Got the time, my favorite. Wow, so Stuart was into Anthrax. Okay, I'm. Mean, that's a band I would not mind, but I uh, tile, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, you know, the 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 four. Yeah. Uh, 
who's with the big four supposedly megadeth metallica anthrax and i think testament was the fourth one mm-hmm. correct me if i'm wrong uh certainly in that order metallica megadeth anthrax and testament would be my favorite in that order um i had a few anthrax albums they are from queens and maybe some of the guys from brooklyn i don't know yeah but uh i can't say i love them never did but there's somehow be all end all among the living some mm-hmm. of the early albums i did persistence of time quite good I never, never really got never really got into them. Never. I mean, Metallica was a little different. I mean, Megadeth. I'm not really a big fan. As I mean, they are. You know, it's, I think it's good. Uh, the only song I kind of like is he did a song for Goldberg. The rest of Crush Him, Crush Him. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a video for that. So, but I'm not a big Megadeth. Metallica kind of crossover because, you know, but uh, yeah, definitely not. But I actually, Stuart, I don't know Greg Walls. Uh, I guess that was a 90s era guitarist. Uh, I'm thinking of some other guitarists. Yeah. Scott Ian and who, who was the other one? Joey Belladonna was the singer. No, Scott Ian was the bass player. Scott, Scott Ian was a guitarist. The guitarist? Okay. I always thought he was a bass yeah. player. Yeah, <laughs> but, he looks like he should Yeah, be. I know, I know. Uh, but he's a guitarist. Uh, yeah, and Spitz. Danny Spitz was the yeah. other guitarist. And I guess Greg Walls was the guy who replaced him or something. Uh, Sub 41, that was a good band. Another good band from Canada. Yeah, I wouldn't. No, nah, I, 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 I know. I, I, I like some of this stuff. They were catchy, you know. Uh, it kind of Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, you know, catchy, funny. You know, the videos were funny. They were good. Uh, I, I thought they were good. I definitely could listen to them. Uh, what about Slipknot? No, 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 no. I think, I think of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like something really. Unpleasant when I think this. Like it scares me. To think of that album. No, I definitely uh, skip the channel with that. Uh... So okay, so System of a Down. Actually, I was texting with a bunch of group of friends yesterday, yeah. and there was a split on System of a Down. Uh, some people, <clears throat> some said they were the best of a certain group. Some said <clears throat> garbage. So System of a Down. I don't. I didn't like them until some of my friend. I think Lou probably. Kind of changed my mind on System mm-hmm. of a Down. Said, I'll listen to it. It's of all the bands that are out now, they're doing something different. And I couldn't help but think that they were. They didn't say they didn't really sound like anyone else. A lot of bands sounded similar. I know I mean, you saying. could see the genre, but but they had a sound that you could definitely tell this is them. You know, I just like I try not. I try to be nice as possible. Uh, you know, my brother. So like my brother's this tall. You know, we're tearing his apart. We. Yeah, he's, I'm the older one, but he's taller than me. But uh, System of Down was not my band. That's no. just like I'm being nice as possible. Not my band. He enjoyed System of Down. Anytime he had it on, I have to go away because I did not want to. You know, they had the music video on. I, I, I had to go. I, I couldn't watch the videos. We had the songs. Like I had to put headphones on. Okay, here's a question for the audience and and for you, Tom. Uh, if you can even answer, it, I'm not sure. Uh, what's your favorite? And to, to me, the word favorite is, doesn't even apply here. But yeah. what's your favorite new metal band? New metal. And you, do you know what new metal is? No. <laughs> okay. So new metal is System of a Down, Corn, uh, I think uh, Disturb is in new metal category. Like, I think Cold Chamber might be. You don't really know the genre. Uh, corn and system. And I think clutch might be new metal. Maybe clutch is cult. The cult. They, they're 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 you know cult following band. You know they got their you know um own type of music. They're really into their fans fan base. They're not really commercial successful. Mm-hmm. I mean they got a big fan base, but they're not like mainstream like these. Nice. You know, you have to look really hard. I mean, they got their fan base. My brother's a big fan. I, I like the, some of the stuff. But, okay, uh, okay, so skip the new metal. Unless you guys have new metal uh, responses, we're going to skip that. And uh, do you know the band Breaking Benjamin? <clears throat> yeah, I heard, I heard of them. They were, I think you might have introduced me to them. Maybe. Or no, maybe. No, uh, it was me, but, uh, I think they're, they're okay. I mean, Papa Roach was, was not bad, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a lot of bands, uh, but like System of Down and Corn. Oh, Corn, not a big fan of Corn. 
<laughs> Not a big fan of corn. <laughs> Let's see. J Jason did a little research for us. The Woodstock 1999 festival featured multiple new metal artists and bands such as Corn, Kid Rock, Godsmack, Limp Biscuit, and Seven Dust. Okay, Godsmack was good. They were acceptable. They were acceptable because uh, they're from Boston, and his vocals and "I Stand Alone" uh, from the Mummy, and uh, they did a cover of um, uh, "Oh Days of Confused" Led Zeppelin. Hmm. Uh, very good. Um, Seven Dust, I heard a little bit of them. Yeah, I, of all those bands, I like Seven Dust the best. They did. They did a song for Chris Jericho. They're pretty heavy. Yeah, uh, but as for Kid Rock, I like a few songs. We talking about more like Southern rock, where he, you know, influence him, or uh, the Ballad of Sheryl Crow, but not his early stuff. That you could go yeah. other way, but his other stuff, more of the rock and roll stuff, mm. and he's a good performer, yeah. you know. But some stuff I like, but other stuff I'm <laughs> other way. Yeah, I don't have much opinion. Um, uh, so let's see. Uh, <clears throat> okay, two thousand. Actually, let's jump a little bit. Oh no, for your sake, two thousand two. Stone Sour comes out with their album Stone Sour. Okay. Didn't you like them? Oh, um, oh, uh, I was um. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, um, I'm slipping that, right? Yeah, Cor Corey. Mm -hmm. He had a good song that was from Spider Man soundtrack. It was really good. So, as a vocalist, I thought he was really good for Stone Sour. Like, it was very understandable. It wasn't, you know, like, yeah, slip, not like, certainly. <laughs> like, the ears are like, you're gonna bleed. like, you know, what's going on? Like, um, Crazy Town, never liked Crazy Town. No. Disturb was fine. Um,. Def Leppard, not their best stuff, but, right. you know, I mean, the 80s, mid-80s was their best stuff. I mean, they're good. Steam Alive, they're really good. Um, um, they did good with Taylor Swift. They did the duets on uh, Crossroads. That was interesting. Yeah, that was... yeah, it was country and rock and roll. They work good together. Um, Kill Switch Engage, did we hear them? I think I might have. I mean, they're pretty cool. Uh, pretty maybe. Cool. I, I... They're a little bit in the seven dust. Yeah. Thing. Um, Propane, not familiar with. Uh, Trapped. Yeah, they were like more that like hard. They're like three doors down genre, whatever that is. Uh, there was that. Yeah, they have one pretty big song that I know. Yeah. Um, oh. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Actually. Uh, yeah, we see how music has really how gone down. <laughs> yeah, you, you see, yeah, as you go through and you do uh, <laughs> Ooh, okay, a list okay, of albums okay, well, by I year. Guess, I guess think of Everessence. That's so awesome. Music hey. gets kind of scary. So, Everessence, she gets, uh, Amy, Amy Lee, Everessence, awesome, very, very good vocalist, good singer, the band's good, Avril Lavigne's good, uh, oh, we got some, ooh. This, this, I mean, all right, all right. Nora Jones, not my cup of tea. Very good, very good mm -hmm. for her genre. Very good, right. very good. Not my side of music, but very good. Christina Aguilera, excellent vocalist, guilty pleasure, like her a lot. Mm -hmm. Remember Mickey Mouse Club for her, Brittany, Justin, JC, Carrie Russell, Ryan Gosling. So, a big Mickey Mouse Club fan. Uh, the Brit Darkness, remember that when they came out? The Darkness. Yeah. What's, a, what's the song called? I believe in a thing called love. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the darkness. They, 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 that song was it was it was like a Queen influence. Uh, Tiny Tim, Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Angel, yeah. Thing. They made a comeback. He's, they're not bad. Uh, this Incubus was not bad. Uh, but yeah, Incubus comes out of an album. Uh, live album, live of Lollapalooza. Yeah, you can see how music real. Oh, 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 Limp Bizkit. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, Limp Bizkit comes out with another album. Results may vary. I don't know why we're talking about them on the show. Um, Lamb of God, as the palaces burn. Uh, Metallica comes out with Saint Anger. That was a big. Deal. That was actually uh, that was good. That, that was, was good. a big deal. That was good. With the sort of really. Garage. Oh, it actually was with the new bass player, right? That was the first one with the new bass player. Yeah, because it was now more Jason. Mm -hmm. yeah, Rob Trujillo yeah. joined the band in 2003. Yeah, yeah that, it didn't. No, that, that was good. Uh, 
Oh, Three Days Grace. I had that album. That was good. Uh, they were good. Uh, and so am I. Uh, like I said, they're real, I like Three Days Grace, but... What about Soil Work? Have you heard them? Mm, no. Uh, Strapping Young Lad. Have you heard them? These guys are brutally heavy. Mm -hmm. And you know what the name of their genre is? Mathcore. <laughs> Math was not my subject in Madison. <laughs> I had some bad teachers in Madison. Uh, Mr. Brown and... Um, uh, Miss Brasket. So, for anybody from Madison people, give a shout out. Who was your worst math teacher? I had my two worst math teachers from Madison. Yeah, yeah Miss Brasket was mine, I think. Oh, she uh, killed me in math. Typo negative comes out with Life is Killing Me. Um, Cocky King, you ever hear of her? <clears throat> She's this amazing female guitarist. Okay. Actually, I met her at the time and I just saw her. She had an okay. official release at that time. Um,. Yeah, do we have any uh, questions um, for the audience to open it up a little bit, give some reading? Uh, how about drummers of all time? Yeah, okay. How about drummers? Top, uh, top 10, top 3, whatever. Top drummers of all time. I'll go first. I'll give you three. Okay. Nickel McBrain from Iron Maiden. Mm hmm Should I give you one you could relate to? Uh, this is kind of out there for me i wouldn't normally say this but since you're different usually i'm talking my metal friends yeah uh liberty devito from billy joel okay but i yeah okay um and let's say uh i'm gonna say nick menza from megadeth okay i'm surprised you didn't say laws from metallica yeah, he, he would be on my top 20. Okay, but I, I think he, he's on my list. Is, uh, Maybe top 10, yeah. Yeah, it's 20. But my number one, if you know me, John Bottom. Led Zeppelin. Har Harold beat you to it. Harold already wrote John Bottom. There. Thank you, Harold. John Bottom, number one. Number two, Crazy Man 2, Keith Moon, The Who. And number three, Dave Grohl. Should have saw that coming. And number four, Taylor Hawks. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So, hold on. So, John Bonham. Keith Moon. Keith Moon. Really? For Keith Moon second? Two. Keith Moon's also for the who? John Bonham, Keith Moon, Dave Grohl. Taylor Hawks. Hawkins. Okay. Uh, Harold's adding Ginger Baker. Ah. Do you like Ginger Baker? Yeah, that was my next one. Ginger Baker. BB's in the front. Ginger Baker. Roger Taylor from Queen. All right. Yeah. Also, I read up on um, Taylor. His big influences were Roger Taylor from Queen and Stuart Copeland from uh, Police. Okay. Thomas Tabone chimes in. Ringo Starr. High school one. Yeah, certainly. That's a classic. Uh, uh, Ringo, I'm a big Beatles fan. Ringo is not in the top 10, not even in the top 20. I'm sorry, but Joey Kramer is up there. Uh, we got to put Phil Collins, the drummer, Don Hanley. Uh, we got to put, uh, uh, oh, um, Cameron from uh, Pearl Jam Sound Garden. Mm, yeah, Cameron, uh, I forget his last name. Uh, so, uh, Jason adds Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffett. I don't know who that is. <clears throat> Um, let's see, I did, from which band, Jason? Uh, I really love, um, Matt Sorum, who played with Guns N' Roses. Mm -hmm. Oh, Matt's good, he's up there, he's, he's up there, Matt's and good. he played with, uh, Audio Slave. No, no, I'm sorry, um, the other one, Double Revolver. Uh, oh, it's Michael Jackson's drummer. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure uh, um, he would have to be good to be with Michael Jackson to keep those. Alex is good for Van Halen. Alex Van Halen uh, is up there. You uh, two, drummer uh, Larry Mullins Jr. Uh, is there is there a guy in in U2 called Dave Evans? Is that the drummer? No, no. <laughs> Actually, uh, one of your buddies, uh, uh, Josh Salat. Excellent drummer. Okay, Josh Salon. Josh Salon. Josh, Josh, you're getting a shout out, dude. Oh, uh, actually, I gotta put another one. This is the best drummers. Uh, Robbie Benson, another drummer of yours. 
I got put up there. Top notch uh, drummer. Uh, schooled, you know. He went through the whole. I seen him live uh, performing with him, and uh, what? Robbie's really good with his tricks. So and yeah. him and Josh definitely. Plus Josh is also in your music videos. We can't forget about that. No. Can't Late for school, Marshy Marshmallows. Playing drums on the, Laser on Star. The grass, playing drums on the roof. And then outer space, he can play drums. This guy. Josh is a cool cat, dude. Josh is cool, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I I bumped the Josh at the Foo Fighters 2015. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Foo Fighters at City Field. Nice. That was an awesome experience. So. Josh is a cool guy. He's uh, definitely up there for drummers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who else would I get to that? Uh, hmm. Um, Bill Ward from Black Sabbath is actually yeah. a great drummer. This, this, I mean, drummer is, I think is a key part, and key part of the band. And yeah. John Bottom doing Moby Dick over 10 minutes live. He saw me number one. His guitar work and Led Zeppelin was never the same. They were done when he passed away. Mm -hmm. And Keith Moon, craziness. His drums are awesome. I mean, smash him and awesome for the Who. And, you know, Dave Grohl, you know, also did some drum side projects with Queen of Stone Age. Did drum for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers for Sunday Night Live after uh, Kurt's passing away. And Tom Petty wanted him as a drummer. So I told you something. The top eight watch you, Pearl Jam watch you, drummer. Dave Grohl is up there. Um, you know, I don't know why the, the name of the drummer for Def Leppard is escaping me. Yes. But he's actually a great drummer, you know. Uh, uh, for drums I like to listen to, I would put him up there. Oh, definitely. I mean, he, <clears throat> especially, you know, after the accident and making adjustments. I mean. Yeah, just for the heart at home, you know. Definitely. He's, he's in my continue. top. 15 drummers, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, Tommy Lee, we can't forget Tommy Lee. Motley Crue, you know, we can't forget Tommy Lee. He's Yeah, he's fun to listen to. His oh drum work gosh. is outstanding. And Joey Kramer. Great Joey great Kramer for Alice Smith, can't yeah. forget that. Great to listen to. And there's the classic, like, famous drummers from the past, like Buddy Rich. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Uh, he's got some weird beats. Uh, and the guy who played with Dream Theater then went to Avenged Sevenfold. Mm -hmm. You know his name? Um, mm, not offhand. Yeah, anyway, he's uh, pretty awesome. I think um, we do with. We could, how about bass player? What's your favorite bass player? Yeah, we didn't get. Oh, we got a little bit of action on the drums. Um, let, let, let's go into the time machine a little bit and then. Okay. Then ask, so. Ooh, 2005, uh, Motley Crue comes out with Red, White, and Crue. Mm -hmm. Queens of the Stone Age comes out with Lullabies to Paralyze. System of a Down comes out with Mesmerize. Uh-huh. <laughs> Bruce Dickinson, Tyranny, Tyranny of Soldiers is a great solo album. Uh, bon Jovi, Have a Nice Day. Any memorize, memory of that? Um, yeah, I think... I... It was okay, you know, some of the stuff, but the best work was, you know, Slippery and Went and uh, other stuff. Uh. Okay, 2006, Stadium Arcadium by Red Hot Chili Peppers. They had some good songs on that album. Uh, the next artist I did see live. Daughtry. I met him live. Awesome. He uh, rocks. Okay, you, yeah, you, you're the one who, the reason I remember his name. Uh, he is really good. I mean, he people want him to sing for other bands. He did solo after the American Idol. I seen him live at the um, Tony Hall three years ago, I believe, and got a picture afterwards. What? Signed my CD. He was awesome. as storytellers. He's he's cool. Chris Dolce was cool. Watch so. this. Okay. Watch this, Daddy. All right. Oh my gosh. Ooh, yeah. Pearl Jam. That was cool. Pearl Jam, that's a, one of my bands. Yeah, what did they put out there? Oh, uh, Pearl, Pearl Jam. Puts out their album, oh Pearl Jam. my gosh, I can't believe it. Uh, <clears throat> Taylor Swift puts out, I guess, her first album, Taylor Swift, 2006. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matis Yahoo puts out Youth. Do you ever hear him? He's like this, uh, uh, maybe Hasidic Jew. Jewish guy, okay, okay, who, who does like this really great kind of like 
rock reggae. Huh. Like really inspired soulful reggae music. It's pretty cool. Uh, what have we got here? Let's see. Uh, the Vines. The Vines, yeah. Oh, uh, they were a good band from Australia. Oh, okay. They were good. They were good. Uh, Pink comes out with I'm Not Dead. She's a very good singer. Very good singer. Very talented. I think one of the best female singers out there, Pink. Uh, very good performer. Um, uh, Joe Satriani comes out with Super Colossal. A uh, really great album. Ah, we got uh, Hoobie Stank. I don't know. I like Hoobie Stank. Mm -hmm. That yeah, was Stank, Every Man for Himself. Yeah, I recently got into Hoobie Stank as I've been listening to this, revisiting these lists, and I remember... Kind of. The reason was really good, and uh, they had the, uh, out of control, and uh, the videos were really good. They were, I liked them. Yeah. So hard. Oh, what interesting! Uh, the Rocketeers. That's a name we mentioned before. Jack White, my guy. That's the only reason I know that, know them is from you. Uh, I know. I I run the stuff. Uh, remember, came over to your house and the Rocketeers. Stay as she goes, and Jack White. You know. The White Stripes was so good because his stuff was awesome. I mean, Megan, not the best drummer in the world, but Jack is good. Thanks, Jason. Jason's uh, going to uh, get going. Yep. See you on the replay. Thanks for check Thanks for hanging out, Jason Hills. And I'm looking forward to doing a music philosophy and more with you soon. That's going to be awesome. That's a must-see. <laughs> a must-see. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so what about Dixie Chicks? Were you excited about their album coming out in 2006? No, they're good looking, but uh, not my cup of tea. I'm not into the, you know, they're talented, but not my cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, oh, I had that album, Three Days Grace, One X, awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jonas Brothers? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Uh, DMX, You're the Dog, again. So DMX, we had, had a loss, right? Just yeah, he just passed away. Uh, they had a big tribute um, by the Barclays Center. Uh, mm -hmm. I was there because I was doing shopping, and I didn't know what was going on. Then people were merchandise DMX like crazy. Watch out! But uh, I'm gonna put this in. So can you move your feet? Kai, you Kai, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, let's see. Stone Sour, Buster Rhymes. Uh, okay, Liam Rhymes. Uh, Alien I just came up here to see you. Def Leppard. Uh, oh, okay. John oh! Uh, yeah, Audio Slave comes out with Revelations in 2006. Excellent. Audio Slave. I had that album. Audio Slave was really mm -hmm. good. I mean, they, I mean, uh, Chris Cornell with uh, Rage Against the Machine. I, I never liked Rage Against the Machine. No. But you put the three of them, Tommy, also a very good guitar player. And it matched met really good. The three of them, Rage Against the Machine and Chris Cornell, perfect match. Super group. Awesome. Uh, it's, oh, Jet! Jet was good from Australia. I like Jet. Yeah, they're pretty good. They were good. They had a couple of good albums. Chemical Romance. They were good. Yeah, uh, my brother liked them. I liked them too. We, we, me and my brother, agreed with them. Um, Outcast does Idlewild. Hey, yeah. That was hey, yeah. yeah. That was decent. Uh, Newfound Glory was uh, punk, catchy, fun, uh, uh, funny. Oh, Weird Al. My brother's a big Weird Al Yankovic fan. Yeah, I love the title, Straight Out of Linwood. Yeah, Weird Al's really good for his parodies of songs. Yeah, do you know Do you know what the parody of the title means? So he, he's going from Straight Out of Compton. Yeah. He's like a, a rap. Yeah. <laughs> straight Out of Linwood. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Jet Shine On, Winger, come out with their album four. Uh, Willie Nelson comes out with an album called Songbird, 2006. Ah, Tremendous D. Tremendous, Tremendous D, D the yeah. Of Destiny is 2006. Woo, I came up here. They grow up here on that. And uh, Thomas <laughs> asked about Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, Red Hot Chili Peppers come out with an album, 2006, called Stadium Arcadium. There, uh, I just recently discovered, Tom, I don't know if you're aware of this. We might have had this discussion, and Thomas to Bone, too, that uh, one of my favorite bands is Red Hot Chili Peppers. I didn't know it. Uh, like I'm kind of a closet thing. Like I mm -hmm. just came out of the closet about it. But uh, on my Spotify, they, like at the end of the year, they yeah. give you a review of how much what you listen to. And it was a couple of years ago that Red Hot Chili Peppers was the number one most listened to thing on my Spotify. 
throughout the year. <laughs> number one over over all the other bands that I listened to. Yeah, that's so like that's shocking. Number one, yeah, that's it's major shocking. shocking. <laughs> strange but true fact. Yeah, that's a strange but true fact. I mean, Chili Peppers, you, you don't yeah. really think about because you haven't really covered Chili Pepper songs. Like just for one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's other bands you cover more, and Chili Peppers, funny enough. Wow, that's that's kind of odd. It's, I mean, it's it's strange. They they really live with me. I don't know how to put it, but I mean, I think uh, about them a lot. Flea's a great, great bass player. Ooh, I knocked down the yeah, heart. I just read the Anthony Kiedis' is. autobiography. It was great. I would be happy to read Flea's. Uh, something about them, you know, with all their flaws and human shortcomings, they just seem like genuine people. Right? They seem like a real brotherhood, more or less. Yeah, they want to rock. They want, yeah, they, and they give it. They give it. You they know? give it. I like, like, I like some songs in them. I mean, I do. I think they're a very good band. I think they're they're very good as a band and very good as for rock and roll. And they're good. I mean, I have no problem with the Chili Peppers. So. Yeah, Anthony's a good front man. I mean, such, such an original. He might look like Iggy Pop, but uh, no, he <laughs> Anthony's got his own things that makes him different. Except as a front man. Oh yeah. Very unique. Like, it's a weird thing. Like, I don't know how to describe it. I don't think I would wear a Red Hot Chili Peppers shirt because they're so, they're too pop for me, really. But, um, but they're in my heart. I don't know. I actually ties in, uh, when I saw the Foo Fighters 2015, who, uh, the special, uh, encore, Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers. Uh -oh. Okay. So, he played drums. Well, Taylor oh. Hawk sung Maggie May, Rod Stewart's classic. Okay. So I do have a, have a chili pepper experience. With one chili pepper, can see him live. Just a pin. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you know the uh, the odd one out in the band is Chad. He's the tallest one. Well, yeah, no, but he's like kind of the the least in the group. Like he's kind of like on the outskirts. Like it's a job. But you know, everybody he gets, you know, just look like it's right. Of course, <laughs> Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. That's his look like if he didn't look like. <laughs> yeah, at least they, at least he has a look like. That's like the. the so, so um, let's see, Tupac. They released like Pac's me. Life in two thousand six. Um, Gwen like Stefani me. comes out with The Sweet Escape. Uh, like Andreas Vollenwater comes out with Midnight Clear. There is ice cream. Um, oh, I, I got, I got, I got uh, Dollar Tree, Nickelback, those are good. 2007 now. Um, Ozzy's still kicking butt. He's ice cream. There's your band. Halloween, Get yeah. With the Here Devil, Amorphous, Sound Waters, which I don't even know that album. Uh, that. Megadeth comes out with you, but United Abominations. Thank you for giving me this big orange. <laughs> Uh, ah! and, let's see. Uh, Too pointy. That is so pointy. Touch this. Metallica way. comes out with Death Magnetic in 2008. Mm-hmm. Baby, baby, um, baby, baby. You got uh, Motley Crue. Oh, and Coldplay comes out with Viva La Vida. Remember that? Oh, that was so played to death. Yeah. That was so commercial, successful. And everybody and everybody was playing it. Not me. I mean... That was all I'm afraid. That's, yeah. That, that, that's... yeah, the song is good. If I hear it once a year, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, it was over the radio playing and stuff like that. Um, that's one. I oh, Glee. That, that's that's, that's yeah. good. Uh, my mom loved Glee, so. Yeah, Glee. Uh, I really love the uh, Can't uh, Don't Stop Believing cover. The uh, Glee version is really, really good. Very powerful. Yeah. Huh. You see, we how it really has. Oh, I get I look through to uh, Bruno Mars. I, I think he's really good. Yeah, he's kind of something special. So, 2010, Bruno Mars puts. Wait, wait, did we see him here? Yeah. 2009. Uh, no, the first time we see him, right? The, the, yeah, you couldn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. 2010, Bruno Mars comes Daddy, out with Duops and Hooligans. I see, he does a good job. He did a good job of covering Prince for Tribute. Excellent. And Bruno, he has that thing where he's really good and he, different genres, he was really good. He could do pop, he could do rock, he could do 
Uh, he's kind of like a Justin Timberlake, kind of like a Michael Jackson. Uh, no, he's well he's respected. Like a fem- phenom, right? He's no, he, he he's he's a producer. He's a writer. He's he does everything. So I seen him. Uh, he had a special a couple years ago. He did it in Apollo Theater. It was excellent. Um, yeah. So he's definitely somebody I think it's good for music. Uh, I see you got uh, for country fans Zach Brown Band. Mm-hmm. They're very respected. Uh, I have friends who got seen City Field. Uh, oh, Katy Perry. Perry. You did carry Perry Perry. Katy Perry is a good singer. Katy Perry is a very We're good singer. Uh, we got Maya Cyrus. Uh, yeah, Miley Cyrus comes out with Can't Be Tamed. Mm-hmm. So that's Hannah Montana, right? So yeah. She, that's when she came out. I yeah. Image. Yeah, I definitely think. changed. Uh, is this but this? You really can see how music has, has changed so bad. Like, it's not really... Yeah, you bought awesome. this? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically what I felt when I it go through the years looking at the albums you. like my soul gets crushed it. and sad but uh, the, the reality is when you look at major sorry when you look at official releases you're getting major label stuff and independent labels but you're not getting the independent independent artists like me yes that are releasing music all this time so there's lots of them lots of us that especially in the last decade or in 2010s and even before we're releasing music without without a label so you're not going to find them on the man on the lists of like music of that year but if you do your homework if you kind of know where to look like a, a lot of my music was released in 2010s and 2000s so there are many artists that are similar to me that actually are doing uh heartfelt music that that's actually substantial but uh you're just not going to find them yeah easily yeah you can find them but it's just not so obvious i mean your stuff is really good i mean you have done uh i mean like the song fight song is really good i think definitely you should get more people to check it out i put it on my profile um i one of my favorite songs is icy icy cold <laughs> which is great guitar work great you do everything that song really kicks butt uh nice. besides uh you know, uh, Laser Star, Late for School, uh, Bells of Gladness is a great video, great holiday video. Mm-hmm. I mean, great original Christmas song, too, because remember, a lot of Christmas songs have covers and covers and covers, but you always came with a fresh one. So mm-hmm. we needed that. <laughs> so, and uh, I listen to some of your other stuff, like Answer Machine, and I Choose, you know, besides uh, Daddy is a really good song, yours. Mm-hmm. All right, right, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so, Tom, it looks like our uh, time is up. I want to make sure you get to where you need to be, which is the bowling alley. Yes, yeah, so I got to get ready. You know, we got practice. Practice makes perfect. Got to get ready for Friday night. I just come off a hot game, 220. I had a 576 scratch series. I had a 157, 199. Two splits are bad. I had two splits that ruined the 200 game. I had a 220. But my all time high score was last year, 235. Nice. Yeah, bowling is my thing, and uh, bowling and music, good combination. Mm-hmm. And is it true that you still won't won't let a bowl leave your hands unless you have your tunes blessing you? <laughs> I, I changed. I, I, for a while, I used to be the music right there, but right recently, I've been without music bowling. Yeah. But a lot of times they have music and they're playing the bowling alley. Okay. So sometimes the good stuff I can really get into it. Other stuff I just tune it out and just. Throw the ball as hard as it could be, like 18, 20 miles an hour. Nice. But uh, this is a great conversation, talking yeah. music, uh, time machine, <laughs> pinionating, and getting all our friends together, have the pinionated uh, for guitarists, for drums, and bands, and stuff like that. So it was Yeah, good. we got a good 38 comments, so people were engaged. So thank you, guys. Music is power. Music is universal language. And... Music is all around us. Can you do this? It is. Life is music is life. Uh, life would suck without music. Yeah, it's it would be a lot less interesting, right? Yeah, and a lot of boring and dull. But at least we got music to keep us escape from reality. And you do a really good job with that. We own music, <laughs> and everybody tune in to John's YouTube channel. Check out his videos, Spotify, everything. This guy's rocks. So. It's for your local artists, too. You That's right, him. yeah. John Henry Sheridan Music. You can find me on YouTube, John Henry Sheridan, all uh, various music platforms. And like he said, 
supporting yeah. a local artist because people like me, uh, we could use support. You know, if you know a, a, an art, artist or musician that's just putting stuff out and you know they're independent and that, you know, you're not sure how they're funding themselves or how they're managing and you like what they do, send them a text, uh, you know, send them a message. You can <laughs> like their videos. You can share the videos or songs with your friends if you think it's good. This helps, you know, it's like uh, creating good karma for all of us. And we, people need good music. So we think that everyone must have access to good music, but people's minds are so, uh, we're always, um, a, lot, a lot of people have very short attention span, right? Yeah. So they, they forget where to look or things are always changing. So, you know, it's good to share inspir inspired things. Yeah, like I shared others. you with uh, Nally Gelman. And uh, with, with the Lloyd is other artist, and um, I mentioned last time I was on about Erin Bowman, who I saw live. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a good singer songwriter, and she's over in London right now. She's from Jersey, so the, support your singer songwriters. They're out there. They they make good music. Yeah, support we them. them. We need them. And support the venues too, like the Berlin Jazz Club. I helped support it. I donated a little bit because mm -hmm. that's why I saw Constantly Maroonis, uh, good nice. friend of Paulie Z's. That's who I met Constantly from Paulie Z. From the cutting room, and Constantine's a good friend. Awesome, likes a picture with a picture. Yeah, and, and Thomas uh, Tabone says, "Good job, thank you, Thomas Tabone, for hanging out with us." Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, J Five. Thank you, everybody who wrote a comment and support and share the replay. Yeah, let's get everybody know. Thank you, Stewart. Yeah, for all, all of you who uh, are watching live, um, you know, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and share the replay going forward. For those of you watching on the replay, same. Uh, I'll, read, I'll still read the comments and uh, we can reply. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, I think, uh, is it fair to say that we're all connected, Tom? Yes, we are. We're all connected. Let's music connects all of us one way or another, but it's better for the good than the bad, the music. Mm -hmm. So stay happy. Keep us in some good tunes. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. And uh, Tom, have a great night bowling tonight. Yep, this practice get ready for Friday night where we count the most. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Rock out. All right. Have a good night, everyone.